What's up guys? Welcome to this unboxing and review of the Canon Vixia HF G50. Now I've been wanting to up my video game for a while and I've been doing some research, figuring out what I need for my situation and landed on this particular camera. Let me just give a quick rundown of some of the features of this particular camera. So this is a 4K video camera. It has about a half inch a 4K CMOS sensor. It has a Digic DV6 image processor, an eight blade circular aperture, which is supposed to give a really pleasing look to the out of focus areas. I'm interested to see uh, how that looks when I start filming with it. It has dual SD card slots, which was something really important I was looking for. It also has five axis image stabilization. That's something that I'm interested in seeing how it works as well. I am planning on doing most of my shooting with this camera with it mounted on a tripod, so I'm not super worried about image stabilization, but it is something that is nice to have in case I do need to handhold it at some point. It has a 20 times optical zoom. Basically that takes it from 29.3 millimeters on the wide end to 627 millimeters on the long end. And that's something I'm really excited about. Um, I'm gonna explain a little bit more about why that is later on, but definitely wanting to get to zoom right in on wildlife would be a big plus for me. And then finally, the camera also has a three inch touchscreen. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start opening this thing up. So some of the accessories here, we've got a cord for charging. You've got the lens hood here. Really glad it came with one of these. And it's got a flip up little lens cover there. Really handy, just a little switch on the side, flips it up and back down really nicely. Something for the power cord there. And then we, it looks like we have the battery here. Now it only comes with the one battery, like, most cameras do, so I'm definitely gonna be purchasing another extra battery. Don't wanna run out of batteries when I'm in the field. All right, we've got a, another part of the charging cord here, and then we have the camera itself. Definitely feel like there's some good weight to this camera. Doesn't feel cheap. All right, so it's got the included hand strap there, so if you are hand holding it, you can have it on your hand. It has a viewfinder at the back there. I'll primarily be using the touch screen here to keep track of my filming. Opens up there. It's a nice good size screen to look at. It does have touch screen capabilities, which I'm really looking forward to. Also, the screen can flip around so if I need to, I can film myself. SD card slots are right there. It's like a, just pop that up, pop some SD cards in there and then close it back down. This is the zoom in and out rocker switch right here at the top, which is really handy and conveniently located. It also has a shoe that you can mount uh, various things on. I'm probably going to be mounting an external mic on top of the camera when I'm recording wildlife. From everything that I've read, um, it does have a built-in microphone, but the microphone is not the greatest, as is the case with a lot of built-in microphones in some of these cameras. So I'm gonna be using an external mic to record audio on this. All right, guys, so I've got the video camera set up. It's charged. So I can use it, I've been playing around with it a little bit. Really like it so far. Seems like it's really good quality. Still have a lot of learning to do on it and how to use some of the different features of it. I just wanted to go over a couple of the reasons why I wanted to get this camera instead of just continuing to use my DSLR for uh, shooting video of snakes and other reptiles. One of the main reasons that I wanted to get a camera like this is because of the insane zoom range that this camera has. So like I said already, the zoom range is from approximately 29 millimeters, which is what I've got it set on right now, all the way into about 600 millimeters. And the benefit is that you don't have to change lenses 
before that. So I've got it at about 29, it's zoomed all the way out right now. And then I'm just gonna slowly zoom in on this toy Land Rover. And that's, that's pretty awesome. One of the other things that I really love about this video camera is the autofocus system. With my DSLR, even though it shoots really great video, the autofocus system is not great when it comes to video. It's caused me to miss some focus on videos that I've tried to shoot. But the autofocus system on this video camera is really, really great. When you have it set to just autofocus where the camera does it all, um, it very, very quickly grabs focus on things. And when you have it set to a more manual focus, I can just very quickly touch the screen and it grabs that focus really quickly. And then if I want it back on the Land Rover, just touch that and it brings it back super fast. So I'm really excited to try this out in the field and see how it works. Now this camera is not going to be the only camera that I'm using to shoot video when I'm in the field. For my herping videos, I'm still going to be using my cell phone to capture a lot of the moment by moment in the field vlog type footage. It's much easier to use. My cell phone also captures 4K video footage and uh, it's just really convenient if I'm road cruising for snakes much more convenient to just grab the phone, turn it on quick and start recording and not have to set up a big fancy rig. However, for shooting better quality up close footage or lots of B-roll footage that I'm hoping to shoot, this camera is going to be far superior. It maintains 4K resolution throughout the zoom range. So whether I'm zoomed all the way in or all the way out, I'll be getting 4K footage, which is really gonna be great, especially for the zoomed in close-up shots. One of the other benefits of having a camera that can zoom in so closely is number one, you can get a lot closer to venomous snakes with your footage and still remain at a safe distance away from them. The other one is hopefully capturing some reptiles and amphibians in situ without disturbing them. Or perhaps even getting closer to bigger animals like alligators or things like that where you definitely wouldn't be able to get that close just by using your cell phone to capture the footage. All right, well the next segment of this video is going to be in the field where I'm testing it out and uh, showing you the results, so let's get out there. All right guys, I've been able to get the camera out into the field a couple of times since I recorded the last session and I'm really, really happy with it. Here are a couple of the pros of this camera that I found. First of all, the zoom is awesome. Uh, being able to zoom in this close to a venomous snake like the timber rattlesnake you can see on the screen right now is just amazing. I'm planning to use that feature a lot in the field. Another feature that is really great is the autofocus system. Uh, it grabs focus really quickly. It uh, responds great to the touch screen if you want to change where it's focused. I'm just really happy. It's much easier than focusing with the DSLR camera that I've been using. Another pro of the camera is you can brighten the LCD touch screen which is great if you're shooting outdoors, which I did a lot. So that was a big plus for sure. Another great feature was the image stabilization. The video that you can see right now of the timber rattlesnakes, I was hand holding that. And it's not perfect, but it's zoomed in quite a lot. And the image stabilization was quite impressive for that. There's a button you can set on the back of the camera that you can make into a image stabilization button and you can press and hold that and it does a great job. A couple of drawbacks to the camera. First of all, it has pretty poor image quality in low lighting situations. So if it's getting close to sunset outside and it's getting darker, or if you're inside and you're in a room that's not well lit, 
you're probably going to need to add some additional lighting in order to get some good image quality. So that was definitely a drawback. Another one that I expected was the onboard mic in the camera is pretty bad. I've been using an external mic with a windsock on it and that's been giving me some really great audio quality for my videos. And then another drawback is that this camera is not going to have the narrow depth of field like you would when you're shooting with a DSLR and a big aperture lens. And for some people that might be a real drawback and you might not want to get this camera. But for me shooting these wildlife, I really wanted to have a bigger depth of field. So this worked out great for me. Overall, I really love this camera and I am looking forward to using it more and on some other trips and uh, can't wait to see what I can shoot for you guys.